So far we've mostly talked about Audi access structures, excuse me, any access structures, access structures that are stuck inside the information, and particularly any hierarchies. There's the intrinsic hierarchy and the explicit hierarchy and the recursive hierarchy and the referential hierarchy. Now let's talk about an Audi hierarchy. In fact, let's talk about a hierarchy that brings all of those concepts together. It's a hybrid, it's a cross between, uh, uh, between a referential hierarchy and a, uh, and a recursive hierarchy, and it's also Audi. So it's a hybrid Audi referential recursive hierarchy. A big mouthful of words, and it's all, you know, I want you to understand all those concepts, but also I want you to see that all I've really described is a table of contents. So think about the table of contents of a book, and think about it this way. Each section of the book is an information item, and the table of contents organizes those information items, those sections, into a hierarchy. It names each of the sections. What's the ID of those information items? What's the ID of a section in a book? I'd say the closest thing we have is the page number. The page number that the section, that the heading that begins on, that's really like the ID. In fact, we use it like an ID, right? We use that page number to get right to the item we want. And there's no two, there's no two, um, there's no two headings well, there actually could be two headings that share the same page number, and so there's a little bit of ambiguity there, but generally speaking, the page number that begins a section is a very good ID for that section. So, the section is the information item, each section has a page number, which is its ID, and each section has a title. And the table of contents of the book takes those sections, organizes them hierarchically, and names all their IDs so that you can get to them. It's a navigational widget. It's a hierarchical navigational widget, but Let's look at this table of contents now as an information structure instead of as the table of contents of the book. So beginning with the, um, uh, with the schema that you have um, that's in this topic, let's take a look at what's in that schema. So we have a book, and the book consists of a set of sections, and those set of sections, notice from this, from this, um, from this schema, are not recursive. They're not nested inside of each other. It's just a flat list. Flat meaning non-hierarchical, non-recursive. Some laundry list of sections. And the sections, as usual, they have an ID and they have a title and they have a body. Each section has that structure to it. Now, just looking at the sections, we'd have no idea what order those sections go in. They may come in instance order, that is the order that they happen to, to land in the instance, but pretty much we don't really have anything to tell, well, we don't definitely have anything to tell us how they fit together hierarchically, which section might be the parent of which other section. That's why we need this other piece of the schema. The piece of the schema under TOC says a TOC is a, is a sequence of one section ref that has an unlimited number of child section refs. That is, that each section ref can be inside itself. What's that? That's a recursive hierarchy. We have a recursive hierarchy of section refs. So these section refs are inside each other, and they're creating the hierarchy. But it's not an it's not a it's not a any hierarchy. It's an Audi hierarchy because it's outside the content. The content that's being uh, organized is in a different part of the schema. It's somewhere else. Now, it's also referential. Why is it referential? Because this hierarchy of section refs, this recursive hierarchy of section refs, has one more attribute, ref ID, and that ref ID, notice the data type, ID ref, points to the ID of the section that belongs at that level of the hierarchy. So it's got a referential aspect. The referential aspect is the ref ID. It's got a recursive aspect. The recursive aspect is the section refs inside of section refs, giving us the ability to, to really create any, any ordering, any parentage among those section refs that we want. And it's also Audi, because if you were to take away this, this TOC, if you were to take away this referential, hierar this referential and recursive hierarchy, you'd still have the sections. You haven't touched the sections. So it's Audi. Okay, now let's take a look at the um, let's take a look at the uh, uh, at the instance that goes with this schema, and I've only given you the TOC. You can imagine that the sections look a lot like the sections that you've seen in other instances. They have an ID, a title, and a body, right? And they're just a, a laundry list of them. It's a flat list, non-hierarchical list of um, of sections. But the the TOC, on the other hand, is an indented list of section refs, and so we can see, looking at the indentation, pretty much the structure of the book. The other thing that I have to mention that allows us to see the structure of the book is that I've named my ref IDs, or I've named the IDs of my sections, in a very particular way. 
The ID of the section has the word SETC underscore to say that it's a section ID, but then it mimics the title of the section itself so that I can scan it and see sect infrastructure. Oh, I get it. That's the infrastructure section. And then sect access structures. Oh, that's the access structure section. Notice how that makes this readable. If I had sect one, sect underscore one, sect underscore two, sect underscore three like that, it would not be legible, right? Not only does it have the same section ref tag repeating over and over again, which really makes it hard for me to know where in the, where in the hierarchy I am, because I have to kind of count levels, I also would have no idea which items each of these is pointing to. So the only thing that's saving me here in readability is the fact that I've named my IDs to mimic the titles of the sections. Now, only in the case where you have to really read the instance, which in this class we will be reading the instances, but in real life, oftentimes those instances are completely hidden, IDs are assigned automatically, and you never see the, you never see the hierarchical structure like this, you would actually see an outline and you would drag things into the outline to change the ordering of the sections. In that case, it really doesn't matter that, that whether or not the IDs mi mimic the sections. And one thing you can be sure of, these IDs can't change, right? Because they've been reference places. We don't want to change the IDs, but over time, we will change the names of the sections. So the IDs will get further and further divergent from the names of the sections and eventually start to cause you problems because you think it's pointing to one section, but you changed the name of that section a long time ago. And so you can't really, um, you can no longer scan it and read it as if you were reading a set of titles. Okay, what else do I need to tell you about the, um, the recursive and referential hierarchy? Um, we've talked about creating the sections in the, in the, in the instance as standalone sections, as non-recursive sections. We've talked about how you construct the, um, the, how you construct the, uh, the uh, recursive hierarchy from having section reps inside of section reps, and how you add an ID ref. Oh, I know, one other thing I want to talk about, um, and that is that notice that the ref ID in the, is, is, as, is an attribute and how scannable also that makes this list. If I put this, this, the section ref as an attribute, no matter what's inside those section ref tags, if I close it up, I can still see the ID that it points to. Uh, that was something I wanted to say, and uh, I guess that's all I needed to say. There was one other thing that I forgot to say, but you guess you'll never know it. I'm um, recording class lectures.